Okay, so I'm going to set up and demonstrate an Elasticsearch cluster. This is video one. Okay, so I'm going to use three Ubuntu 20 servers in different parts of the world. I'm going to install Elasticsearch on all three of them identically and also set up metric beat on them as well to collect statistics. And these three Elasticsearch servers will be part of a cluster. The metric beats will send their data to all three Elasticsearch servers. I've already organized the servers. I've organized one. I've organized one in New York, Amsterdam, and Singapore. I got them from DigitalOcean. They are $10 a month droplets. Ubuntu 20.04, 2 gigs of RAM, 1 CPU, 50 gigs SSD. With Elasticsearch, I find 2 gigs of RAM is the minimum. I don't have much luck using less than that. Okay, so I've given my servers host names, ES1, ES2, ES3. I'm going to name each node in the cluster as node 1, node 2, node 3. These IP addresses are fictional as part of my documentation, but I've now gone out and I've got the IP addresses from DigitalOcean and that's them there. So I'm going to use those IP addresses. Okay, so I've SSH'd onto those three servers, ES1, ES2, ES3, and there's nothing there. These are brand new Ubuntu installs straight from DigitalOcean. New York, Amsterdam, and Singapore. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is install Elasticsearch on all three servers. So I need the Elasticsearch public signing key. Okay, I'm using PuTTY, so I can just right click and it will paste the clipboard. Very good. Install dependencies. Okay, so it's apt transport HTTPS. It's probably already there. I've got to save the repository definition. Very good. Now update and install the Elasticsearch package sudo apt update and install Elasticsearch. Okay, so my server in Singapore was quite slow in that case, but going to continue. Okay, it's now time to edit the Elasticsearch configuration. We're going to need to modify each of the properties and create some settings. Okay, so sudo nano etc Elasticsearch Elasticsearch YML. Okay, so scroll down using the cursor, cluster name, I'm going to call my cluster. So my cluster, my node, I'm going to call node one. Network host, zero, zero, zero. So it binds to all interfaces. Port 9200, that is default. Discovery seed hosts, these are the IP addresses or domain names of each server in the cluster. I have the three IP addresses now, ES1, ES2, and ES3. I'm just going to copy that whole line and put it in the square brackets there. So, very good. Cluster initial master node. I'm just going to set ES1 as my initial master node. This is only important when first starting up. I will configure this identically on ES2 and ES3. It's important that as each Elasticsearch server starts up, they can all agree on the same initial master node. That way they'll all get the same cluster UUID. If there's a failure in them agreeing on the very first cluster UUID, they won't be part of the same cluster. So I'm just using ES1. You could use any server you like. We even put all three addresses in there, but I'm just being very explicit here saying this is the initial master node for all ES servers when you start up. This doesn't mean that this is the only master node. Any one of these IP addresses will be a master node at any point in time, depending on network reliability. Okay. Okay, so that's good. Save that. I'm going to do very similar to these other ES2 and ES3, except the only difference being the node name, node name 2 in this case. Go node name three. Very good. Going back to this diagram, I have the three Ubuntu 20 servers with Elasticsearch installed on each. They're all configured to be part of the same cluster called My Cluster. I'm now going to start just Elasticsearch ES1. Okay, so let's check these status. 
very good active running. It can take maybe 10 to 30 seconds to start up Elasticsearch like that. So I'll see, exit that. Now it's time to check properties about this Elasticsearch server. So this first one here, localhost, it's going to print out the properties in pretty format of the Elasticsearch server there. Okay, so curl get HTTP localhost 9200 pretty. Okay, so it says here, it says name node one cluster my cluster cluster UUID. Okay, so when I start up Elasticsearch on these other two servers, they're all going to need to agree on the same cluster UUID. I can at this point in time also check the cluster health, so localhost 9200 cluster health pretty. Cluster name, my cluster, status green, number of nodes, one. Okay, that makes sense. I only have one Elasticsearch server started. Okay, let's do the same things on the other servers now, which are called the data nodes. Okay, so Elasticsearch start on ES2 and ES3 same time doesn't matter the master has started so these other two should be able to find it by IP address okay so ES2 let's check the status okay, active running okay, and ES3 active running okay let's check their properties Okay, so looks like ES2 can agree on the cluster UID. And node 3 has a problem, NA. Let's check the status of the cluster health on ES1. Okay, so there's number of nodes too. So there's been a problem with ES3 down there. Let's try restart. Okay, just remember that starting and restarting an Elasticsearch server is a slow process. That takes about 30 seconds, I guess, for me. Check the properties again. Cluster UID NA. No luck. Okay, so one thing I will try is to delete the node information that ES3 has cached. That you can find in the var lib Elasticsearch nodes folder. So I'm just going to delete that there. Very good. And try and restart this Elasticsearch server again. Okay. Now, whenever the Elasticsearch servers disagree on the cluster UID, and perhaps even that indicates disagreement, you can delete the varlib Elasticsearch nodes folder and restart. And hopefully you'll have more luck the next time. Okay, let's try. NA, cluster UID NA. Okay, so this ES3 server that I'm using is quite problematic for me. So I'm going to organize another server. Okay, so I have a new server. It has a new IP address. So I'm going to need to update the IP address throughout. And reinstall again. So Okay, so while that is starting, I'm just going to update the YMLs for the other two. With a new IP address. Okay, just already there we go. So being one one zero and control X yes. Let's quickly check the status of ES3 now to see whether it did find the master ES1. And there we go. It has the master cluster UUID there. But since I've updated the YMLs for ES1 and ES2, I'm just going to restart both of those. Okay, so they're both restarted now. Let's check the cluster health again. And number of nodes, three. Okay, so we can check the cluster health from all of them. It says number of nodes, three. So they can all agree. Okay, number of nodes three. Right now, since I had several issues there and rebuilt my ES3 and they've all been started and reconfigured, I don't really know who the master node is currently, but one of them is. We can find out that by getting some properties about the node state. So cluster state nodes pretty. This will give me a list of the nodes that it knows about. So if I scroll up there, node 3 has that ID H1CN. Node 2 has that ID LLE. And node 1 has that ID. So to find out who is the current master again, we can just do localhost 9200 cluster stats master node pretty. And it's saying the master node equals H1C. So that is actually node 3. So node 3 right now is actually the master. So if I run that same request, 
master node there look up the master node property i'm just saying print it pretty they can all agree so if i stop now the node on es3 stop pretty much within a second or two these would have decided on a new master node see lle lle and this hasn't started up yet so currently it's going to say the cluster health has two nodes go number of nodes two so once i restart es3 this number number of nodes will go back to three and they will all agree on the same master node which is likely to be that one lle so master node lle or l1e and once this is finished starting up let's look at the master node okay so it has decided also that that's the master node and if i look at the number of nodes again health cluster health there's number of nodes three Okay, so right now I did have some problems setting that up, especially with ES3 there, but I now have a cluster of three Elasticsearch servers, all able to communicate with each other and decide amongst themselves who is the current master based on whichever one has switched off or on. So now these servers I've used are all on the internet. They all have all their ports open to the world. So Elasticsearch will use ports 9200 and 9300 in this configuration. We can see that by typing S which is the new version of netstat until NP we can see the port 9200 is open and 9300 is open so what I'm going to do on all three servers is add IP rules to allow only those three servers to communicate amongst each other with those IP addresses that I was given now this example code here is using these fictional IP addresses so I have created myself some commands already so I'm going to allow port 9200 for amongst these three IP addresses here and drop everything else. So running this IP tables rule on each of these servers. And I'm also going to do it for port 9300 because Elasticsearch is also using that port. Okay, and just to confirm the rules. Very good. So those three servers can communicate amongst each other and keep their cluster state synchronized. So in the next video, I'll set up metric beat on each of these three servers and configure them to look at all three nodes in the cluster. So that if any one goes down, we're still able to get statistics from the metric beat running on the same server. Okay, so excellent.